In this video, we're going to walk through setting up payroll items. Payroll items make sure that you pay your employees the correct wages for the hours that they work, but will also dictate where the cost of those wages end up showing up in your profit and loss statement. So there's two easy purposes for payroll items, and although it may seem like you need a lot or they may be confusing in the way you need to set them up, here's the clear and simple rules. You would need a payroll item to determine the correct wage to pay your staff or to determine the correct chart of account where you want those wages to end up when you're looking at the P&L. So many companies can get away with two simple payroll items wages and overtime wages. You would need overtime wages because it falls under condition number one there. You want to pay the employees the correct amount for overtime, therefore you need a different payroll item for it. When you're in a scenario where you've got an installation division, a maintenance division, an irrigation division, etc., it can seem tempting to set up payroll items for each division to make sure they end up in the correct chart of account. Now if you have a unique payroll account for each one of those divisions, then yes, you're going to have to set it up that way. But there are simpler ways to do that using service items. So once again, you'll only need a payroll item when and if the wage for the staff is different than normal, or when and if you want it to go to a different payroll account than normal. Now payroll items aren't ideal for job costing, and really you shouldn't even think too much about job costing when setting up your payroll items. There's a lot easier ways to track wages and hours according to divisions or according to jobs using service items, not payroll items. It'll keep your payroll far simpler. If you watched the last video, we encouraged you to try to avoid this. Again, if you're thinking about job costing when you're doing your payroll items, it can be tempting to set up payroll items for each division, payroll accounts for each division, and then you're into a messy scenario where employees need all kinds of different settings to make sure they get paid accurately in QuickBooks. This is a scenario that we want to avoid. There's a lot simpler way to set this up. We'll try and walk you through it. Let's take a look for a second at payroll items in QuickBooks and how they work. To find your payroll items, you go to lists and you go payroll item list. And I believe this option is only activated if you have the QuickBooks payroll option activated. Here you can see I've got some sample payroll items set up. And I do have several because I am going to need several to make sure things get a co um, cost for properly in my accounting. First of all, you can see I've got field wages hourly and field wages salary. So if I have some employees in my field staff that are paid a salary, like my foreman, I'm going to need a different payroll code for them than I will for my generic hourly field staff. I've also got overhead hourly. And that's because I want my overhead staff payroll to go to a different account than my field staff's payroll. And then I've got things like field wages hourly, field wages prevailing wage hourly, and field wages snow hourly, because I'm assuming this company is going to pay different rates of pay for prevailing wage work, that's the point of prevailing wages, and perhaps even for snow work. If you paid your regular employees $15 an hour for maintenance, but when they were working on snow you bumped the rate to $18 an hour, you can do that using payroll items and again, make payroll instantaneous, hands off, no data entry needed, but you got to set up your payroll items correctly. When you set up a payroll item, it looks like this. First, you give it a name and I would give it a name that describes it clearly what it is. In this case, these are field wages, so wages for my field staff and it's hourly. When you hit next, you're asked to choose what account in your chart of accounts you want to link this to. And just note, every time you make a paycheck for an employee using this payroll item, the wages for this employee are going to end up in this account in your chart of accounts. So I've picked my payroll field, which is in my cost of goods sold account. So all the wages that I pay employees using this payroll item are going to end up in my profit and loss statement under my field payroll staff account, and that's a cost of goods sold account. And then you can set up your earnings and your reporting period, etc., based on your local uh, laws and regulations. Now, I would also have a different payroll set up, for example, my overhead salary. My overhead salary gets a name like overhead salary. It has its own payroll item, 
because I want to link it to a different chart of account. I don't want my overhead staff's wages to end up in my cost of goods sold section. Overhead staff's payroll is not estimated into my estimates. It's an overhead expense. And therefore, I want to make sure all the wages I pay my overhead staff end up in my overhead payroll account. And that's an expense account rather than a cost of goods sold. So when do you need a payroll code and when can you use something else? Well, here's the conditions where you would absolutely need to create a payroll code. Number one, you're going to need one for the hourly wages you pay your staff. That's your most basic payroll item that you'd set up. You'd also need one for salary wages if you pay any staff a salary. If all your staff are hourly, that could be unnecessary. Uh, but if you pay anybody a salary, you're going to need that set up. Overtime wages. So if you pay overtime, you're also going to need a payroll item for overtime. And QuickBooks will walk you through that. It'll automatically set up an item if you choose. It's an overtime item for time and a half or double time or whatever your overtime threshold is. You would need a payroll code if you do prevailing wage work. So if you pay your employees a premium when they work on a government project or a commercial project, then you can set up a prevailing wage payroll code with a specific rate anytime employees do prevailing wage work. It's a new payroll code because it, of course, is a different wage. You also could set up a payroll item when you have services that pay different rates of pay. So for example, the snow and the maintenance example, I pay somebody 15 an hour when they do maintenance work and I pay that same person $18 an hour or maybe $20 an hour when they do snow and ice work. In that case, you could create two payroll items, one hourly maintenance and one hourly snow. And the hourly maintenance would be $15 an hour and the hourly snow would be $20 an hour. And you can set up an employee's timesheets to use those different rates based on the different jobs they're working on uh, and it'll pay the employee correct. You also would need a payroll code if you want the wage expenses to end up into a different chart of account. So you saw me in the last example, I had my field staff going to my field payroll account, or my cost of goods sold payroll account, and I had my overhead staff going to my expense payroll account, or my overhead payroll account. So anytime you have wage expenses that you want to end up in a different chart of account, the employee is gonna need a, a payroll item that points to that chart of account. So here's when you don't need to create a separate payroll code where you will be uh, making things more complicated for yourself. If you want to track your profit or your wage expenses by different division types or services, so I want to know how much I spent in wages for maintenance versus uh, construction versus unbillable, you could set up payroll items for that, but you're, it's going to create a lot of complexity down the road. You're far better off using service items for that. Stick with these videos. We'll get to service items in a video coming up. If you just want to know the hours you worked in the different divisions, once again, you can set up payroll codes or payroll items for that, but it makes things a lot more complicated. We can use a service item to pull exactly the number of hours worked in each division in a given year without having to create separate payroll codes for that. Or if you want to track unbillable time, what's our billable versus unbillable hours? Again, don't need a separate payroll code for that. You pay your employees likely the same rates of pay for when they're on unbillable time versus billable time. Therefore, you don't need a separate payroll code for that. But you can set up a service item, and we'll get to that soon, to so that you can track your hours and wage costs for unbillable time. So a couple quick tips to remember. Keep your payroll items as simple as possible. Only use payroll items when your rates of pay or the wages you pay your employees are different than normal. Or you need to use a payroll item when you want to point those wages to a different chart of account than usual. Those are the only two conditions that you really need to set up payroll items. Everything else can be accomplished with service items that we'll get to in a few minutes.